Here is your latest African news. Diaspora. Death toll from 7.2 magnitude earthquake in Haiti rises over 1,300 and over 1,800 people injured. The Haitian government declared a state of emergency after at least 1,300 people died in a 7.2 magnitude earthquake that hit the country on Sunday morning, Prime Minister Ariel Henry announced in a news conference. More than 1,800 people were also injured, the country's civil protection service has confirmed. The earthquake was about 12 kilometers northeast of St. Louis du Sud and 10 kilometers deep according to the U.S. Geological Survey. There are also reports of significant damage to homes, roads and infrastructure. The Pope offered prayers for the victims during a Sunday address and expressed hope that aid would arrive soon. Aftershocks were felt after the initial tremor, with the USGS initially warning the earthquake could result in thousands of fatalities and injuries. A 2010 earthquake in Haiti killed more than 200,000 people and caused extensive damage to the country's infrastructure and economy. We send our heartfelt condolences to our brothers and sisters over in Haiti, and we call out for the African Union to send relief and assistance to the people of Haiti. Zambia. Zambia's opposition leader, Hichilema, wins election after capturing more than two 0.8 million votes, with the 155 of 156 constituencies reporting. Official results showed Hichilema had garnered 2,810,757 votes against President Edgar Lungu's total of 1,814,201. The 59-year-old veteran opposition political beat his longtime rival Lungu following a bruising race held against the backdrop of deteriorating standards of living. This is the sixth time Hichilema, who's 59, has run for the top job and the third time he has challenged 64-year-old incumbent Lungu. In 2016, Hichilema narrowly lost to Lungu by around 100,000 100, votes. Lungu, who has been in office for six years, faced the electorate amid growing resentment about rising living costs and crackdowns on dissent in southern African, in the southern African country rather. Hichilema enjoyed the backing of 10 opposition parties at Thursday's vote under the banner of his and the largest opposition United Party for National Development. South Africa. Former South African President Jacob Zuma undergoes surgery to remain in hospital. South Africa's jailed ex-president, Jacob Gedehlegi Sazuma, who early this month was moved from prison to a health facility, has undergone surgery and will stay in hospital for further procedures, the government said on Sunday. The 79-year-old was admitted to the hospital for observation on August the 6th for an undisclosed condition, and he has remained there for the time being. His long-running corruption trial over an arms deal dating back more than two decades ago was last week postponed to next month pending a medical report that declared Zuma's fitness for trial. Last month, Zuma began serving a 15-month jail sentence in a separate case for snubbing a commission probing state corruption under his 2009 to 2018 presidency. Zimbabwe. Anger as American hunter kills another iconic lion. Another iconic male lion was killed by an American hunter using a bow and arrow in the giant Huangin National Park, sparking global outrage. The lion, named Mopane, was killed last week outside the protected area of Huangin National Park, causing outrage and spurring recollections of Cecil the lion, who was killed in 2015 in the same area. The lion, believed to be 12 years old, was reportedly lured out of the park using bait into nearby land before he was killed. Cecil had been lured out of the park using an elephant carcass. The lion had a partnership with another male lion, Sidule. They formed a pride with two female adult lions and six younger lions around 16 to 18 months old. Sidule was killed by trophy hunters in 2019. Humane Society said in a statement added, as with Cecil six years ago, the preserve, the perverse rather pleasure some people derive from killing iconic animals brought this noble lion's life to a tragic, tragic death. 
Namibia. Namibia sells 57 elephants out of the initial 170 to buyers abroad. Namibia's plan to sell 57 high-value elephants to local and overseas buyers via auction has, according to the country's Environment Ministry. Namibia says the auction helped it strike a balance between the conserva conservation rather, of elephants and management of the risks they pose when they encroach onto land used by humans. But conservationists have questioned the government's claims of human-elephant conflict. Over 100,000 people signed an online petition condemning the auction, which closed on January the 29th. Ministry spokesperson Romeo Muyunda stated that the negative publicity may have affected demand for the elephants with affordability or a lack of buyers meeting the conditions of sale also possible factors on the matter. Ghana. Ghana welcomes survivors of 1921 Tulsa race massacre. Ghana welcomes survivors of the 1921 Tulsa race massacre. Viola Ford Fletcher, who is 107 years old, and her brother Hugh Van Ellis, 100 years old. The two are the last known living survivors of the 1921 racist massacre in Tulsa, Oklahoma. This is the first time they step on African soil for a tour in Ghana. The visit is part of a homecoming campaign organized by the social media platform Our Black Truth. On May 31st, 1921, a group of black men went to the Tulsa courthouse to defend a young African-American man who was at the time accused of assaulting a white woman. They found themselves, unfortunately, facing a mob of hundreds of furious white people. Tensions sparked and shots were fired and the African-Americans retreated to their neighborhood of Greenwood. The next day, at dawn, white men looted and burnt the neighborhood. At the time, so prosperous, it was called Black Wall Street. In 2001, a commission created to study the tragedy concluded that Tulsa authorities themselves had armed some of the white rioters. Historians say that as many as 300 African-American residents lost their lives and nearly 10,000 people were left homeless in the 1921 incident that drew the white against the black population. DRC. Democratic Republic of Congo accepts U.S. military help against ADF militia. Uh, Democratic Republic of Congo President Felix Tshisekedi on Sunday authorized U.S. Special Forces to help the Congolese army fight the Allied Democratic Forces, an armed group linked to the Islamic State. The ADF, which has been deemed a terrorist group, is considered the deadliest of scores of armed militants that roam the mineral-rich Eastern Democratic Republic of Congo. The Catholic Church in the country says the ADF has killed about six thousand civilians since 2013. President Felix Tshisekedi authorized the deployment of American anti-terrorism experts in the east of the Democratic Republic of Congo, said a statement from the presidency. The U.S. forces will boost the Congolese army's fight against ADF in the national parks of Virunga and Garamba, it added. The mission will last several weeks and is specifically directed against the ADF at this point in time. Thanks for watching. Visit our YouTube channel Tuna Checky to watch our daily news reports and our website at tunacheki.tv for all the latest news updates. Also, don't forget to tune in to our new show, Startup Africa, every Thursday on Tuna Checky. You can directly support this new series by becoming our YouTube member or becoming a patron. And remember, Africa is And please feel free to leave your suggestions, news tips or topics about Africa that you'd like us to explore.